For most people, those symptoms will start to fade in just about a week or so. But for others, the effects of the virus are still lingering and have been for months. 13 on your side's Elena Holland spoke to one of these young long haulers and has put on how the virus changes some people's lives. It takes strength to lift weights. Down the garage and back. But for Angel Solis, physical strength. But if I lift anything too heavy, my heart rate goes pretty high and I run out of breath pretty quick. He has had to relearn. They said that's normal and it'll probably take some time because my lungs took a pretty big hit. After the 31-year-old nearly died from COVID-19. They were honest with me and said he had a really slim chance of living. In April of last year, Angel started to feel sick. Started with the body aches and started getting chills and stuff. A few days later, his mother had to take him to Holland Hospital. He could barely breathe. There, he tested positive for the virus. By seven or eight, I don't really remember much after that. His doctor sedated him and transferred him to a hospital in Ann Arbor. When he woke up, he had a tube in his neck and was 30 pounds lighter. And there was a nurse in there and I didn't have a voice and I couldn't really move, so I made whatever little noise I could and she turned around and I asked her some, something like, you know, how long have I been out? She goes, you've been out for at least a month or more. He had lost a month of his life. Meanwhile, his sister Joanna Calderon was remaining strong while Angel could not. It was really hard. Days I would just cry and it's still really emotional. Um, but I try to keep myself strong for my kids and my family. Angel had many blood clots and even lost part of his finger. My lungs started filling up with liquid and they didn't know why. He could not eat, could not move, and could not see his family in person. I didn't want to lose faith, but at the same time, too, I had to be ready for whatever was going to happen. But slowly, he grew stronger, learning to get up and walk once again. Maybe 20, 30 feet, and then my legs would just start shaking and... I'd have to sit down and put oxygen in my nose because I couldn't breathe. Another month later, he transferred to Mary Freebed for rehab, spending a couple of weeks rebuilding his strength. I still had a lot of questions in my head, like, how long is this going to last? And, you know, if, if I'll ever work again or be able to play with my nephews or my niece or do little things like that because I was really scared I was never going to recover. Now he's still not back to the strength he once had and has not been able to return to work. I see the most severe cases probably in the whole state of Michigan. His rehab doctor, Ralph Wong. He's still not able to get back to his full strength and, and unfortunately he, he might have had some like maybe permanent nerve or muscle damage. Angel is what you might call a long hauler, dealing with long-term effects of COVID-19. I think Dr. Wong says he sees lung damage, heart rate changes, fatigue and brain fog in patients months after diagnosis. But these are not common. Maybe 10% or 5% of all COVID patients. So uh, thankfully not, not a lot. He says depression or PTSD symptoms can also happen. There is days where, you know, I get pretty like depressed and sad to where like I think I'm never going to be able to do anything again. But having family around and joking with them or, you know, even just talking to them, it helps out a lot. For Angel, his family has given him the strength to overcome his new physical obstacles. Just being able to see my family, knowing I could have been dead, you know, it really opens your eyes, you know, and makes you realize a lot of things. But he hopes others take the virus seriously and don't have to live through the same. For the people that don't believe it, you know, they can see for me, you know, it's, it's real. Elena Holland, 13 on your side.